the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord who is good, and whose steadfast love endures forever. You are in the midst of us, O Lord, and we are called by your name. Alleluia. Welcome to St. Michael and the Angels for the service of evening prayer just uh, on the uh, eve of Pentecost, the great celebration of the Holy Spirit uh, giving birth to the church, so to speak. Let us uh, pray together, let us say here scripture together, and let us um, know the presence of God, <coughs> excuse me, in his word and in the silence. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. For you, Lord, have looked with favour on your lowly servant, and from this day all generations will call me blessed. You, O most mighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown the strength of your arm. You have scattered the proud in their conceit. You have cast down the mighty from their thrones and have lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and you have, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your people, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise you made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is psalm number 48. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. Fair and lofty is God's holy mountain. It is the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, as in the far north, stands the city of the Most High. In his citadels, God is well known as a sure defence. See how the rulers assembled they came on together against her. They were amazed when they saw her. They were dismayed and ready to flee. Trembling came upon them and anguish as it comes on a woman in childbirth. Or as when the east wind blows and breaks up the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts. The city our God upholds forever. We have called to mind your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. As your name is great, O God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. Let God's mountain rejoice, and the daughter cities of Judah be glad, because of your judgments. Go in procession around the circuit of Jerusalem, count the number of her towers. Take note of her ramparts, Examine her citadels, so that you may tell the next generation that such is God, our God for ever and ever. God shall be our guide to all eternity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading from Scripture this evening comes from the Gospel of John. Chapter 15, beginning at the 26th verse. Just want to make a point here that actually we've been going through the first letter of John for the last week or so. It's been absolutely wonderful. And it stops yesterday. We don't get chapter 5. Absolutely baffling to me. I'm not sure why they do that, but this is what happens when you follow the lectionary. So, Gospel of John, chapter 15, beginning at the 26th verse. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, an hour is coming when those who kill you will think that by doing so they are offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known the Father or me. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. 
I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you yet none of you asks me where are you going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Let us continue with the revelations of divine uh, divine love. Uh, the long text by Julian of Norwich, chapter 4. Excuse me. Then I suddenly saw the red blood trickling down from under the crown of thorns, hot and fresh and very plentiful, as though it were at the moment of his passion when the crown of thorns was thrust on his blessed head, he who was both God and man, the same who suffered for me like that, I believed truly and strongly that it was he himself who showed me this without any any intermediary. And as part of the same showing, the Trinity suddenly filled my heart with the greatest joy. And I understood that in heaven it will be like that forever for those who come there. For the Trinity is God. God is the Trinity. The Trinity is our maker and protector. The Trinity is our dear friend forever, our everlasting joy and bliss through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this was shown in the first revelation and in all of them. For it seems to me that where Jesus is spoken of, the Holy Trinity is to be understood. And I said, Benedicte Domini, because I, I meant this with such deep veneration. I said it in a very loud voice. And I was astounded with wonder and admiration that he who is so holy and awe-inspiring was willing to be so familiar with a sinful being living in wretched flesh. I supposed that the time of my temptation had now come, for I thought that God would allow me to be tempted by fiends before I died. With the sight of the blessed passion, along with the Godhead that I saw in my mind, I knew that I, yes, and every living creature, could have strength to resist all the fiends of hell and all spiritual temptation. Then he, brought, then he brought our blessed lady into my mind. I saw her spiritually and bodily likeness, a meek and simple maid, young, little more than a child, of the same bodily form as when she conceived. God also showed me part of the wisdom and truth of her soul, so that, so that I understood what reverence she held, she beheld her God and Maker, and how reverently she marvelled that he chose to be born of her, a simple creature of his own making. And this wisdom and faithfulness, knowing as she did the greatness of her Maker and the littleness of her who was made, moved her to say very humbly to Gabriel, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. With this sight, I really understood that she is greater in worthiness and grace than all that God had that God made below her. For, as I see it, nothing that is made is above her except the blessed person of Christ. Let 
let's pray. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us, therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The dead he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, you have not left, up, left us alone, but promised your abiding protection. In all we face, grant us such a knowledge of your presence and abiding care that nothing can destroy our trust. Through Jesus Christ, our liberator, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Abide with us, O Lord. For it is toward evening, and the day is almost over. Abide with us, for the days are hastening on, and we hasten with them. Abide with us, and with all your faithful people, until the day star rises, and the morning light appears, and we shall abide with you forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here at St. Mark and the Angels for the service of evening prayer on Saturday before Pentecost. Now, tomorrow, uh, we will not be live streaming morning prayer at 8 o'clock as we have been for the last I don't know, nine weeks or whatever it is, because we are back at church, which means we have two services at church, one at 8 o'clock, which is a low mass, which of course you are welcome to attend, and 10 o'clock. Uh, our 10 o'clock Mass, our Solemn High Mass, will be live streamed at 10 o'clock, so please join us for that. That will be, um, I think, will be quite a marvellous experience. It's the first time we're all able to gather together in church again. So please join us for that. But just know that morning prayer will not be live streamed at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. However, 10 o'clock Mass will be, so please join us then. And at 4 p.m., uh, we will be live streaming. Uh, Book of Common Prayer, Evening Prayer. So join us for both of those services tomorrow. In all you do and say and be for the rest of your evening, please know the presence of God as we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And hopefully, uh, as we pray together, we will know something of the inspiration and the guidance and comfort that we will need uh, going forward in this time. So let us all pray for our openness and our willingness to be led uh, and new and exciting, maybe a little bit scary, but ultimately God's ways of being together. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace who brought us again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, equip us with everything good so that we may do God's will. To whom be glory forever. Alleluia. Amen.